<laughs> if you can't, just lay down. <laughs> Ma'am, I got EMS coming for you. I was already on a traffic stop, and I noticed that um, blue uh, Frontier uh, driving at a high rate of speed passed me. I also noticed that it didn't have a tail light, and the headlight was out as well, so you had multiple infractions. I attempted to conduct a traffic stop at that point. It began to flee immediately. It's crossing Northwest 7th place, still north. Roadways are clear. We're going to be on a dirt road. Signal four, signal four, stand by. When I made contact with the driver, he was able to exit out the vehicle um, and actually watched him climb from the driver's seat over the passenger and exit out the vehicle. And later on, he was actually trying to state that he was not driving. And I was able to determine that he was okay, he was breathing. He was laying on the ground, I had control of him. And at that point, I was trying to get these other um, occupants out the vehicle until I had backup. Ma'am? Oh. Roll medics. Oh. Oh. Passenger, if you can, please step out of the vehicle. Are you all right? No. Sir, stay on the ground for me. Ma'am? Ma'am, please get out. Oh, I'm trying. I'm, my hands are hurting. Oh, Sir, stay on the ground. Put your hands behind your back. Ma'am, walk towards me. Okay. Is anybody else in the car? Yes, there's a front passenger. Okay, that's fine. She can't get out. I was able to see that there was possibly only one person in the vehicle. So um, I went ahead and approached the vehicle. During that time, I still have my weapon drawn because I don't know if there's someone in that vehicle, if that person has a weapon. She was actually um, injured. I had to assist her getting out. We're still, still continuing the investigation. I'm trying to identify these people as well. I'm trying to see why they ran um, during this point a little bit, trying to kind of just create a foundation of what just happened. What, what, what was the deal? Why, why was he running? Do you have any idea? Um, I believe it was because he had no license. Oh. Or maybe it was suspended, and I think I think he's on uh, probation. Probation? I'm, I'm pretty he, sure. Did he make any statements of wanting to hide any controlled substances or anything like that? Um, not to my knowledge. He was just more worried about um, getting away, I guess. I don't okay. know. I just told him that wasn't going to happen. Did you tell him to stop at any time? Yeah. At that point, a vehicle inventory was conducted, and during the course of that vehicle inventory, there's various amounts of paraphernalia and controlled substances found within the vehicle. Looks like um, some empty baggies. Looks like some more pills here. We'll identify that. This is all on the driver's side, between the driver's side door and his front seat there. Okay. And that's hers? That's in the females? This was on the passenger side. We're gonna have just tools of the trade right here. We're gonna have a spoon, and then we actually have a loaded needle, which is surprising. And we got some more white rocks here. Okay. Um, we got scales. It, it appears that um, we have a user here and a user there. So. The passenger was actually transported to a hospital in the city of Ocala. And during the x-ray, it's revealed that she had some uh, unknown items within her cavity. She was actually trying to hide some heroin that was inside of her. At the end of the day, these people are habitual offenders. The small percent of the population that we deal with um, but hopefully they'll learn from these mistakes because at some point it's gonna catch up with them when they're using. Either someone's gonna get really hurt or they're just gonna hurt themselves.